this act, the feeling is it will lead to a stabilization of health care premiums out there for employers. Uh, that this, this skyrocketing cost of, to provide health care for employees is somehow going to stabilize. I can see some of that with the initiatives, uh, especially in the commercial end, because they've already started at the same time accountable care initiatives. Uh, whether or not that happens or not, I think it's too early to tell, but you know, that's a fleeting goal of, of this bill. I don't know how you can have contraction in an industry and think you're going to save money. Uh, if you end up with the state exchanges, the insurance companies are pretty much by the by uh, because you have the federal control in both uh, Medicare and Medicaid monies. Uh, if the private sector, a small business, those uh, that do not buy into this plan and drop their insurances, then more of their employees go into the state exchanges. So the insurance companies are losing premiums. But the state exchanges, in many cases, um, are being populated by these smaller, like hospital systems, that are partnering with the large insurance companies to create a product. But Reed, to answer that question, I don't know that the premiums can come down because I thought driving all this volume was to provide the finances to pay for students over 26 and pre-existing conditions and all of the things that are expensive that the insurance company doesn't want to cover. So won't they just say, well, yes, you gave me a lot more money, but you gave me a whole lot more risk, and I have to keep that money to cover that risk? You know, my concern there from a physician standpoint is at, at some point in time, we're going to move to bundle payments, which is going to force the smaller practices to gain any kind of leverage they're either going to have to sell out to the hospital uh, or they're going to have to group up in some form or fashion. The, the smaller practices and the bundle payment mechanism, I have a feeling, might be you know, a big loser. Each year there are fewer and fewer primary care physicians graduating from programs, internal medicine physicians, family practitioners, pediatricians, and obstetricians. And now, you have more and more hospitals recruiting graduating internists and family practitioners to be hospitalists. And so that prevents those physicians, those primary care physicians, from going out into the community and working in the community. The law does nothing to help that situation. And if, as Judy stated, more and more physicians withdraw from Medicare and Medicaid, there will even be less physicians in the community to treat the community's health care, and we're not replacing enough of them. And so this creates a tremendous deficit of available, available providers for the community. I, I don't see how this helps. Consolidation uh, kills the free market and increases the pricing of how we deliver. And with all of these rules and regulations that you have to go through, and the contraction of doctors, then it opens the door for where did, did, the, did the RN step up to a new level? Did the PAs go to a new level? Does a doctor only see somebody when they're sick and out of hospital? Does Rite Aid continue to put people in their uh, drug stores to do the quick checks on people? I think that's going to expand significantly. Not just Rite Aid, though, Walmart. I mean, you know, right. Target, Kmart before long will start having doctors. Walgreens. You know, drugstores and big box stores will start selling doctors. The other thing is, the negative is obviously accountable care continues on because it was part of that act. From an um, economic point of view, more and more groups are already moving forward. People are getting uh, the ability to start an insurance exchange or a small insurance plan. The ACOs are starting to have another push. I think the economics are going to push some of this forward, mm -hmm. even if the some of the the law uh, provisions don't get funded properly. But if you look at the reports from the pioneer programs, they were supposed to be able to start them up for about two point eight million dollars, and it's about eighteen or higher just to get to break even. They haven't shown any significant savings in the pioneer programs under the ACOs. So I don't know how you're going to save money when it's increased to that level. And that's the unintended consequence of this whole deal. Physicians need to start doing some strategic thinking about the future. 
uh, especially the smaller practices. And you know, as I say, if, if you're the type of practice that are going to sit on your hands and mo move forward down the road without any strategic thinking, uh, be prepared to lose a lot of money. Or be prepared to go sell immediately. Correct. Correct. We as consultants need to go visit every one of our clients and help them make informed decisions based on facts and numbers and forecasts rather than letting them just do a knee-jerk panic of what this is going to mean to them. Because it won't happen overnight, but it will happen slowly while they're not paying attention. And the more they have advance warning of what's going to happen, the better they can be prepared for that. And I think we right. can help them do that.